John Colshaw is most famous for appearing to be somebody else. As one of the country's best-loved impersonators, he has developed a huge portfolio of caricatures of the personalities of our time, which he presents on stage, radio, and TV for our frequent amusement. More recently, however, we've also, also seen him as himself, expressing his love for astronomy as a presenter on the sky at night. John was born and grew up in Ormskirk in Lancashire. His father had been a craftsman and bomb disposal officer in wartime and had an acute appreciation of the transience of human existence. He imparted to John a powerful desire always to grasp opportunities when the chance arises. As a young person, John had a dual fascination with the people around him and the stars above him, which have been the driving themes of his life. He remembers to this day an intriguing cast of local characters that he observed as a child and remains able to mimic, from Dave Ball, the old man in the pub who always held his pint in the same way, to his grandmother's eccentric cleaning lady, Mrs. Jump. As well as observing the world around him, however, he also looked up. His brother James had a rudimentary telescope and John soon learned how to observe the heavens. He has never lost his awe and fascination with what he sees. His interest was also fired by watching his hero, Patrick Moore, on the sky at night, whose quirky style proved so effective at communicating enthusiasm and understanding, whilst also, of course, providing superb material for John's developing talent at mimicry. At school, John was often described as a daydreamer, looking through the classroom windows with his mind elsewhere. He felt inspired, though, when Eric Seal, a wise tutor, said, you concentrate on what you're good at, lad, what you believe in. You get after it and jolly well go for it. With performance in his blood, he was a founder member of his sixth form comedy group, intriguingly named the Quick Step Flux Lego set. And his impersonations of characters such as Neil Kinnock, Bob Geldorf, and Mr. Backhouse, the English teacher, soon became a major part of the repertoire. A natural communicator, John decided on a career in the media and set about gaining experience. He started as a presenter on the local hospital radio and borrowed the studio in his spare time to make demonstration tapes, which he sent to all and sundry in search of a job. He also found a natural talent for voiceovers and was to be heard on local radio promoting the qualities of the local car dealers and hardware shops. In 1987, a local radio station, Red Rose Radio, held a competition for a new disc jockey, which John won. After a single primetime appearance, he found himself in the graveyard slot from 2 to 6 a.m., but he soon built his reputation and moved around commercial radio stations in the north while still working on voiceovers to supplement his income. He was working at Viking Radio when the receptionist suggested to him that he was wasting his talent just talking between Madonna records and that he should seek a career on stage and TV. John took that advice, entering and winning a TV talent competition, which set up the next phase of his career. He continued to work in radio, often taking part in pranks where he impersonated famous people of the day and still sent demonstration tapes to all and sundry, soon becoming part of the team delivering the immensely successful TV show Spitting Image. With a repertoire of more than 40 characters, he was at the heart of the show for several years. Soon, he was also on Radio 4, taking part in 11 series of the show Dead Ringers, which also transferred to the BBC, too, for a further seven series. With his reputation now firmly established, John is to be seen and heard in a huge variety of productions, impersonating a multitude of characters, and there can be very few people here today who have not enjoyed his performances. Throughout this time, John never lost his fascination for the stars and grew to become an enthusiastic amateur astronomer. He also retained his fascination with Patrick Moore and continued to incorporate his character into his shows. By this time, the sky at night was approaching its 50th anniversary 
and the producers decided to commemorate the occasion with a repeat of the first ever show. There was, however, no recording, only a script, and they turned to John to play the young Patrick Moore in a new production. Patrick himself was initially skeptical of the idea, opining, we don't want to be turning the sky at night into Monty Python, but John won him over, and the program was made, an amazing coincidence of the two great themes of John's life. John is now a regular presenter of the program alongside the rest of his work and is gaining a substantial reputation in the world of science communication. He is one of the judges in the Royal Society Winton Prize for Scientific Books, a recognition he values very highly. John Colshaw is an exemplary case study of how to be successful by grasping opportunities wherever they arise whilst always being true to oneself. His passion for astronomy is palpable. By his own definition, Nirvana is showing his girlfriend Saturn before bedtime. John has managed to combine his unique skills and passions in a career which has given pleasure, pleasure to multitudes. There is surely much more to come. Mr. Chancellor, on the recommendation of Senate and Council, I present to you Jonathan Peter Colshaw, that you may confer upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. Well, 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 what a uh, wonderful honor. Thank you for that very uh, humbling citation. My life flashing uh, before my eyes. I thought there was a lovely sort of Alan Bennett quality about the way you delivered that, which I found <laughs> very comforting. Uh, it's a tremendous... Thank you very much indeed, sincerely. Um, President, Lords, Ladies, fellow graduates, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, the Pope, whoever is here. Um, this truly is uh, a wonderful, wonderful honour. I, I count myself very fortunate to have... Uh, been awarded uh, two honorary fellowships in the past, one from Edge Hill University in Ormskirk, my hometown, and the other from the University of Central Lancashire. Um, today, there isn't particularly a local connection as such, and so that for me makes it a very particular honor uh, itself. And uh, it is a great, great pleasure to share the day with you and to witness all of the presentations that have gone on today. And I'm sure, as uh, Mayor Boris uh, would say, as has been alluded to, um, we are living in very challenging times indeed. But here we have the wonderful great minds, the cutting-edge thinkers of the future, the future entrepreneurs who are going to jolly well lift us out of the mess that my colleagues have jolly well dumped us in. Huzzah! <laughs> So uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, gate crash your uh, special day. Hello. <laughs> Phone ringtones, they sort of blend into life now, don't they? They really do. So who would have thought I've gone into John Bishop for no reason at all? I never expected that to happen, but it has. So there you go. <laughs> and these sort of like globular clusters remind us of Professor Brian Cox and I think if you want to appreciate the true wonders of the universe, then all you have to do is look up at something bright and point. <laughs> I'll just wish a very quick uh, congratulations as well to Dr. Paul Abel, my great friend and uh, colleague from the sky at night. Now that both of us are doctors, we should be exactly like John Pertwee and Patrick Troughton, and we should get in amongst our sky at night colleagues and be totally insufferable. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much indeed. This is a, a wonderful, wonderful honour. I'd like to dedicate it uh, in full uh, to, uh, to my mum and dad, Teresa and Jim Colshaw, uh, who left us um, a couple of years ago, two and three years ago and uh, they'd have been immensely proud of this. I can hear my mother saying, oh, very suited with you, Jonathan, very suited. Uh, so I dedicate it uh, in its entirety to them. 
who I'm sure are watching us right now. Uh, thank you very much. Godspeed to the future, and thank you very much, Neve, for this great event.